Hello and welcome back to the course on our programming. And in today's tutorial, we're going to learn some new geometries. We're going to be talking about histograms and density charts. And actually, as we already know, histograms are also statistics. So it's going to be something like this. We're going to be talking about geometries and we're going to be talking about statistics at the same time. So let's go into our studio. Okay, histograms and density charts. So far, we've only been working with points and a little bit with lines. How about we create a new one? So let's uh, start with a new variable. We'll start with S and we'll uh, call ggplot. Here we'll say, as we usually do, data equals movies. And then aesthetics, x equals budget millions. And that's all. We're actually not going to use a second aesthetic. We're not going to use the y axis. Why? Well, because we won't need one, as you'll see just now. We're going to use s, and we're going to create, we're going to add a geometry. And the geometry is going to be geom underscore histogram. And here we're going to say bin width equals 10. So that's how we want to bin our variable x for this histogram. So if I run s now, if I run s plus, what you'll see is a histogram that appeared. So basically bin width is controlling how wide these bins are. And I'm just saying 10 million in each bin. So that's 0 to 10, that's 10 to 20, 20 to 30 and basically each one of these bars is telling us how many movies fall into that bin. So how many movies there were in our data set, there's about 25, 50, so I don't know, like around 30, 32, 35 movies with zero to 10 million budget. And then there's between just under 75 or around 70 movies with a 10 to $20 million budget. And then there's about around 120 movies with a budget of 20 to 30 million dollars and so on. So that's how this histogram works. You can change the bin width, you can make it five, then you'll have more, uh, you can make it 50, then you'll have less and so on. So we're gonna keep it at 10. That's how you construct a histogram. And now you can also see why we only needed one aesthetic X. That's because that's all we have. We have the budget millions and then this new variable over here, which is count, is generated by R. That's why it's also, it's not just a geometry, it's actually a statistic because R is aggregating values. It's first of all, it's creating these bins for you and then it's aggregating your rows or your observations in your data set into these bins. And that's where the statistical part comes from. All right, so it looks like a skewed uh, normal distribution. So most movies have a lower budget somewhere uh, somewhere around 30 million plus minus a couple 10 million. All right, so how do we add color to this? Well, this is going to be a bit of a surprise. Add color. Uh, we're going to say, let's just copy this line. We're going to copy this line and here we'll say comma. Now we want to map the color. We want to map the color to genre, right? We don't want to set the color. We could set the color. So I could just say, oh, well, <laughs> I'm giving the secret away. The, the secret is it's not color, it's fill. So if I say fill equals, uh, let's say green, well, in quotation marks, uh, you'll see that it became green. But I want to, that's setting the color. I don't want to set the color, I want to map the color. I want to say aesthetics. And because it's a more complex process, remember, so we're going to say fill equals genre. And color is reserved for something else here. Color is the outline, fill is the fill of these boxes. So there we go, you can see now it looks um, it looks a little bit like uh, like these squares that, and the colors are similar sometimes, so it looks like they're merging into each other. And we don't want that, we want it separate, right? So let's add a border, add a border. And now I'm gonna copy this again, but the border now, I don't want to map it, I wanna set it. I wanna say, that's why I'm not gonna put it inside the aesthetic, I'm just gonna, the aesthetic function, I'm just gonna say color equals black right so let me make some space and if i run this now you can see that looks much better like that don't you agree when you have this black border around it it makes it stand out like pop out much more so that's a great one and this is going to be our chart number three right this is going to be chart number three uh, but in fact we will also we will improve it at the end of this section, we'll improve this chart a little bit, so we won't copy it into the visualization, into the presentation yet. All right, and finally for today, I wanted to show you how to create density charts. Now, you might not need them ever. Sometimes you may need them, 
density charts. So they basically illustrate the probability density function. So instead of S geom histogram, I'm going to say S geom density. Now inside I want, so if I run that, you'll see that's the density. Of course, it's not, not uh, beautiful yet. It looks cool, right? It looks smooth, but uh, let's make it even better. We'll say aesthetics fill equals genre, just like we did before with the plot. So there we go. The only problem here is that they're all behind each other. So they're not on top of each other. You can't really see what's going on. So we're going to add a, a secret parameter here, which is called position and equals just type in position stack. So if you run that, you'll see that they're stacked on top of each other. And we got pretty cool visualization here. Uh, worth worth looking at. Although we won't include it in our presentation because it's really hard to explain to executives what a probability density function is over here. And you know that every single point has a probability of zero, but the probability of a certain band is given by its area. That is a nightmare and I really don't um, recommend doing that. So we're not going to add this uh, all the beautiful chart into our presentation. We'll add the bar chart, the histogram instead, uh, which is also pretty, pretty um, good and we'll actually improve it even more. All right. So there we go. That's how to create a uh, density chart. And if you ever need them uh, due to the nature of your work, and then you need the geom density function. Also, we learned the geom histogram today and we practiced some Aesthetics mapping versus setting. You can already see how they're coming in handy in our uh, chart creation process. All right, that's all for today. Learned a couple of new things. Um, give that a go. Maybe try some, try some of those on your own. And I will see you next time. Until then, happy coding.